Hi guys, my name is Patrick, but you can call me 26. And what we're going to do today is we are going to build infinite scroll views. And we are going to use some of the new features uh, launched with iOS 18 uh, to build this infinite scroll view, right? So what we're going to have is going to be, we're going to hit the API and it's going to load a number of pages. Currently, we have loaded uh, 12 pages, right? I believe the total number of pages is going to be 40 something. And we're going to scroll until we get to the last um, element in that particular page. And then uh, our lazy VStack is going to load more, right? So for example, if we scroll, uh, we are going to get some. Some are still loading, right? So this is the Rick and Morty API, right? Uh, that's what we're going to be getting and we could wait on it and some of them are still loading But for purposes of illustration, we're just going to go to the last item on uh, on page 12 And then it's going to load the next pages and so on and so forth until we get to the very end, right? So um, it's hard to predict how it's going to work because you're going to use the lazy V stack So sometimes it loads many pages sometimes it loads a few, right? And so on and so forth but what we want is when we get to the last element that has been loaded it's going to load more ideally when we start we're just going to load the first page but the lazy vstack sometimes loads like 20 pages in a go right so let's get there so you see now the number of pages loaded is going to be 16 right now we have we're at page 16 and if we continue scrolling we should jump again now we're loading uh we've loaded four more we're in 20 Continue scrolling, get to somewhere where it has to load the last last of the 20th. It's going to get, and we jump from 20 all the way to 31, right? So that's how it works, right? So that's what you're going to build. We're going to be hitting a live API, getting the data from that API, and then loading them. Um, and when we get to the very last element in uh, the list that has been loaded, we're going to load more, um, more entries, right? So that's what you're going to do. So. I am going to quickly show you the network service that we use to fetch data from our API, right? I already have another video where I go into detail on how we create this uh, particular network service. We just make a few changes to it to keep track of the particular page, right? But in that video, you can load the first page of the characters in the Rick, from the Rick and Morty API, right? But you've made a few changes to the very same uh, function and I'd like to go over them because that's not the main point of this video. So I'm not going to explain line by line or type it out line by line. So let's have a look. We now have, a just like the previous video, we have um, variable characters and this is just going to hold an array of characters that we get back from the API. Then we have the current page that we are on so that we can actually show it on the uh, navigation um, we can show it at the top of our navigation screen. Let's just come here. This is it, right? The current page. So that's what you're going to use. So if the current page is seven, we're going to show seven, right? Then the total number of pages, this is just going to ensure that we know when to stop fetching pages, right? So this is to keep track of the number of pages fetched and the upper limit. And then we have the fetch characters. We have the URL string. And here we just inject the current page. And uh, we get the URL, we decode it. And then afterwards we do all the same things that we have done to get the data back. And then, um, we put the values in the total pages, right? And then we increase the current page by one, right? So that's going to be that. And then afterwards, um, we have this function, which we can use to load the next page, right? And we check if we can load more. And how we check if we can load more is if the current page is less than the total number of pages, which is going to be 40 something. If you check the API, you can confirm with that, right? So that's going to be basically our network service. And, um, Nothing remarkable. Let's go to the data that we get back, right? So we have the character and for the character, we have three things, right? If you check um, this, we have the ID for identifiable, right? Because you're going to use it in a list or something like a list, right? And we need the name and the image, right? And this is what it's going to be. And then we have the info and the info will just tell us the count and the pages. You can check the API to see exactly what that looks like. And then we have the character response that become the big JSON that we get back. And it's going to have an info and then the results, right? So this results are what we get the characters. So the results is going to be an array of characters, which is what it was uh, if you watch the previous video uh, regarding this. And then we have um, in the info, we just have the count and the pages, right? So these are the things that we need, right? So that's that. And then we can come to the character rule because um, it's almost, it's exactly the same that uh, we used in the previous video. And what we have is an we pass in the character and then we have an async image where we pass in the um, the image, the URL to the image, and then we show the image, give it a bit of size, put a progress view while it's loading, then we put the character's name. And because I noticed some characters have really long names, I just put a line limit, a minimum scale factor, and um, if the name is really, really long, I couldn't find a name that was really, really long, but I found some names that were... Uh, 
Okay, maybe they are, they have been shrunk. That's why you can't tell. But right. So if you're going to truncate it, truncate the end because of like this one in the first page where we have a Abad, Abadango cluster princess, right? Which is a bit longer than the other names, right? You notice it's a bit longer than the other names, right? The others have shorter names. One has only one name, and so on and so forth, right? So that's just for that. So that's the character row, right? So now the meat of our app is going to be in the content view, where we're going to be using the new APIs that have been provided to scroll view. So let's dive into that. So what we're going to do first is we need our view model here. So we could just say let VM and VM is going to be our network service, right? Like so. And then afterwards we need our navigation stack and that's primarily to show the, um, the title navigation stack like so then, um, Then afterwards we need our scroll view where all the magic is going to happen. So we have our scroll view and then we have our lazy V stack, right? Our lazy V, okay. Lazy V stack, right? So we get our lazy V stack and here, what we're going to do is um, we're going to put uh, loop through all the characters. So we say for each, we're going to be loading them in a bit for each and we just want VM dot characters right so we get that and then we go to the closure and here we could just have the character say something like character in in this closure and then here we can come and have we could put a v stack and in the v stack what you're going to do is you're going to have our characters row and then you're going to pass in the character right and then we want to give it equal space all around so we could come here and we say padding we want it to occupy 80 percent of the space available so we just are going to say dot horizontal like so, and we're going to use something that will soon be deprecated, but let's use it for now. That's going to be main dot bounds, main dot bounds dot width, and we multiply this by 0 0.1, right? So if you multiply it by 0 0.1 on the left and the right, that's going to be 20%. So the remaining space available is going to be 80%, which is what we want, right? Then after that, we need to make sure that our scroll view in particular, we need to make sure that our scroll view, um, we have our VStack here and um, or we, could we could apply this, right? We could come and apply this on the character row, right? Let's just come and apply it on the character row. Come here, cut this, put it here, right? Then afterwards, we are going to go and say we would like to put on the scroll view, right? So we come here and we say, we want to say dot scroll target layout, right? So that is going to be that. And then um, afterwards, we could now put the task, come here on the scroll view and say we want the task. And what we want to keep track of is going to be, we could come here and we say we want the ID, and this is going to be the current page, right? So it's going to be vm.current page. So that when you change the current page, when we change the current page, um, we call for more characters, right? So what you're going to do here is when the current page, is, uh, page changes, we just want to say vm dot dot fetch characters, right? So that's going to be that. And then we get the first lot of characters here. And then we want to keep our navigation title so that you can know dot how many um, pages we are. So we could come here and we say we want the pages. And in the pages, we're just going to use string interpo interpolation. And here we're going to say vm dot current, not characters, but current page, right? vm dot current page, right? So this is going to give us the page and now it has loaded 29 in a go, which is a bit fast, right? Now we, this is where all the magic is going to happen. We come here and we say dot on scroll. And remember, this is only available in iOS 18, right? I'm currently um, using uh, Xcode 16 beta 2, right? The second beta of X, Xcode 16, right? And this is going to be, we need on scroll target visibility change, right? So it has two options. It has the ID type and the threshold, right? And then with the action applied, right? The threshold is such that when um, you can decide how much of the, the last element or the element in question you want it to change before an action happens, right? Ideally, it's the default is 50%, right? So for example, you could say that um, when, you, when the last element, 50% uh, of it is loaded, perform the particular action, right? Um, or, 
or that is if you don't specify it, right? But if you specify it, you could say if the first 20% is seen, right? The 20% is visible, perform the particular action, right? So what we could do here is, um, let's pick the second one. And here it requires the ID type. And for us, we want the character, which is going to be what is going to be visible. And we want the ID and we say dot self, right? Dot self like so. The threshold, we want it to be 0 0.3. So if it's 30% of the final element, do this, right? Then we can hit tab and come here and we press enter like so. And here we could just say we want the car ID in and we could come to the closure. And what we want to see, we want to get if it is the last character. So if, if let last character, last character, last car, character. Okay, it doesn't by uh, however you spell it, just make sure that's uh, what you use going forward. And here we say VM dot characters and we want the last one. If this is the case, right? If it's the last one, we check that the car ID, right? Car ID, okay, not that, not that, but we want the car ID dot contains where, and what do we want? We want to, we could use um, dollar sign notation. We want to check where the element is going to be the same as the last character dot id right so if you get the a point to a point where the character ids have the same as um the same id as the last elements character id uh in the list that is loaded what we want to do we want to come here and we check if vm dot can load more if this is the case we want to increment the page so it's just say vm dot current page and this is going to be plus equals one, right? Not not two, but one, right? So we just want to load one more page with that, right? So, and then after that, that's it, right? That's all we need to do. So what we could do is we could run this and see this in action. So give it a second. And you, of course, you could also try it out with the, uh, the canvas, on the canvas here with this particular preview. But let's just load it on a simulator so that you can see it properly in all its glory and revel in it right so we have loaded 13 now and what we'd want to do is um let's scroll until we see we still have 13 let's scroll until we get to the very last element of 13 and then more are going to be loaded right okay give it a second um the many alternate versions of rick apparently ah, hepatitis a and hepatitis c okay e coli dr wong and 13 let's continue until we get to it and when we get to the very last you see we're almost getting to the bottom right it's going to load and then it's going to load a number of pages right so continue until the very last one is available and there right so we have loaded 20 more right we have loaded seven more pages and now we can see that right and we continue loading continue scrolling 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 until we get close to the last one the 20th one and then when we get close to the la the 20th one Again, you see, we're scrolling almost to the bottom. We're going to load more pages, right? So there, we have 28 now, right? And we can continue scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. We're at 38 now. And I know it's 40 something, right? So if we continue doing this, basically that's 43, right? So we add 43 which might be the last one, right? And so that butter robot is the last, very last element. I remember that, um, I remember that particular episode where they had uh, a robot which had existential dread, right? So that is it, right? So there are 43 pages available, right? So that is it. And we have now gotten to the very bottom and you see we have page pages 43 that are being loaded and basically that so this is particularly good if you you could use it for example to if you have a video player to decide when to stop um when to start playing a particular like each cell is a video right it, like in instagram right so when you scroll to that particular location it's going to start playing uh, there's a particular api in collection view where you can check whether or not also in table view whether or not a cell can be seen right but is in view right so this is particularly the same this is just replicating that uh, ability right so for example you could decide um that when you scroll to that particular cell it's available you could either decide to load it or another option would be to to load more if you're doing an infinite scroll like we're doing or maybe to start playing a video so that's that Thank you for watching, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.